when you teach, uh, always as I as I do here, uh, present uh, the timetable. Uh, always that will uh, help uh, their their view and their understanding more clearly because uh, we are living in the era of video, video oriented, visible, okay? Even your handphones and everything is a video. I watching, okay? Therefore, they are used to, uh, uh, you know, look through their eyes. Therefore, we have to help them, okay? Now, here is a very uh, crucial uh, issues which I have already taught you many times, okay? But... Uh, one time is not enough. Few times are not enough. Uh, uh, with, uh, with the reference of the before creation issue, okay? Remember that lectures, previous two lectures talking about before creation? Okay, with that before creation topic, I'm dealing with this gospel issue as well. Now, as you know, this is what we call the mystery of God. That's the terminology uh, called mystery of God. What is the mystery of God? You see, mystery means, mystery means we, we cannot comprehend uh, in our intellectual capacity, beyond our intellectual comprehension. You know, meaning that in, beyond our intellectual understanding. Okay? Human cannot understand some of the biblical issues Okay, with our intellectual level. Bible shows us that, you know, there are many issues that deal with, issues that dealing with beyond our intellectual level. The Bible calls it the mystery. Even Paul, even Peter, used the term called the mystery. John even called it the mystery. Okay? Without the help of the uh, spiritual inspiration, we cannot comprehend that. We cannot understand. So that, this is one of that issues. This is Okay, the salvation issue is one of the issues that I will be dealing with this time here. Now, in, a, in the previous lecture, lecture 10, we have learned that, we have learned that the first gospel was given uh, to us to Christians, the first gospel, the seed of woman gospel was given to God's people throughout the church history. Throughout the church history, the first gospel, gospel was given. Okay. Uh, even Paul and John and Peter, all those famous people, understood the first gospel is the first gospel. That means because of the fall of Adam. See, this is the important part. 
because of the fall of Adam, Father God decided to send the Son God to die on the cross. Let me repeat. Because of the fall of Adam, Father God decided to, decided to send the Son God to this world to die on the cross. That is what we call the Proto-Evangelion or Proto-Evangelion or the Seed of Woman prophecy. All are in line with together. Same expression. Let me repeat. Because of the fall of Adam, God decided to send Jesus to this world to die. Therefore, his crucifixion was the clear fulfillment of the proto-evangelion. That we know that. Okay? We've been teaching this all the time. Even Paul believed this proto-evangelion, which is the first gospel. How long Paul believed this? For 20 years. 20 years means, okay, 20 years means here, his conversion. He became a Christian in AD 35. In 35, AD 35, 20 means until AD 55. 55 is when he was writing 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Okay? So for 20 years of his ministries, he taught, he taught, he understood the Proto-Evangelion, meaning because of the fall of Adam, Jesus came to this world. That's the Proto-Evangelion. So he taught this gospel for how many years? For 20 years. How do we know? He wrote here, first letter, first gospel, first book that he wrote was Galatians in 49. In the letter to Galatians, mentioning the first gospel. His Second and third letter was written here in 51 during the second missionary journey. He wrote first and second Thessalonians in 51. In those first and second Thessalonians also, Paul addressed the proto-evangelion because of the fall of Adam, Jesus decided to come to this world, to die on the cross. So here, Galatians, which is the first letter, and second and third letters, first and second Thessalonians, all dealing with the proto-evangelion. Okay? So you now you have to memorize all these years. Okay? You can see his first missionary journey See here, 46 to 48. During the time of that journey, he planted many churches and he taught this. He taught that Proto-Evangelion. Out of that, his teachings, many people got saved. Okay? Now, After the second missionary journey, which is here, 50 to 52, second missionary journey, <clears throat> he took off for 
third missionary journey, starting 53 all the way to 57. This is a third missionary journey, very long period here. During this time, he planted school of Tyrannus in Ephesus, operating for two years in Acts 19, verse 9. Today, this is the first Bible college uh, okay, recorded in the Bible. So the Paul taught the leaders where he planted churches, gathered there in Ephesus, taught them for two years, okay, exclusively. After two years, Exclusive training, he sent back, sent them back to their respective churches, and about 30 of them, he sent them, 30 of them, he sent them to Rome as a missionary, as missionaries. So their names are recorded in Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16, there are about 30 names. Okay, all those 30 people graduated from School of Tyrannus. Now, at the end of the School of Tyrannus, okay, he wrote 1st and 2nd Corinthians in Ephesus. Okay, he wrote that. As he was writing the First and Second Corinthians, the Holy Spirit all of a sudden inspired, inspired Paul. Okay, teaching him a new revelation, new revelation. Okay, on the gospel, on the gospel. Okay, after thirty years. His ministries. After 30 years, his ministries, such a multitude of multitude of ministerial experiences, okay, in terms of church plantings and teachings and preachings, operating Bible colleges, okay, and sending missionaries all over, you know, Roman empires, very heavily experienced uh, spiritual leader, okay? Upon the 20 years experience, all of a sudden Holy Spirit revealed to him that, Paul, this, this first gospel in Genesis 3.15 is not the first gospel. It was uh, shocking to him. Okay, that first gospel, John Genesis three fifteen, was not the first gospel. Actually, he said the first gospel God designed before the creation. The first gospel was made here before the creation. He said that. He revealed to Paul. Okay? Paul was shocked by it. So the Holy Spirit taught him, this is the mystery, he said that. Here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 7. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 7. That Paul said to Corinthians leaders, I have 
I have received the mystery of God that crucifixion plan was designed before the creation. Do you remember the before the creation? I have given you six expressions before the creation. That's why I taught you that. Okay. It was shocked by him. And also revealed to Paul by saying this, Paul, that mystery of crucifixion before the creation has been hidden, has been hidden. For such a long time, you see, hidden since the before the creation. Hidden, he said, up until this AD 55, where he was writing the first Corinthians. Paul was shocked. This plan, this mystery, has been hidden. Okay? Until when? 55. Until the moment that he was writing the first Corinthians. It's been hidden. hidden. Now he said, now revealing to me. Now finally revealing to me. That was a very much turning point his theology, okay, especially the doctrine of salvation, theology. What a, what a new revelation. Okay, so his, his, Paul's mind was just, he was, he was, he was shocked and surprised and the Holy Spirit now began to re redesign his thinking. Okay? Re recreation of his uh, thinking in the area of salvation and God's plan. He was uh, bothering with this. So now, then, what would happen? I have taught 20 years in the past. Okay, the Genesis 3.15. Now, wow, prior to Genesis 3.15, even prior to creation of Adam, okay, all the way to before the creation, God planned the crucifixion. Wow, it's, it's amazing and miracle. New revelation. From that time on, okay, here in 57, which is the la last year of the third missionary journey, he wrote Romans. He wrote Romans. Now, Romans has 16 chapters, okay, as you know, Romans, first eight chapters, so doctrine of Christian Christianity, first eight chapters. And chapter 9 through 11, the doctrines on Israelology. And doctrines on Israel. Okay, and chapters 12 all the way to 16 and teaching how to live your life, lifestyle of Christianity. The three sections there. At the end of that book writing, 
here in chapter 16, verses 25 and 26. Paul concluded, okay, he concluded, he concluded the letter, okay, expressing and confirming the mystery of God again, which he, he addressed here in 1 Corinthians 2, 7. He said this, you Roman Christians, let me reveal to you the crucifixion of Jesus was not just simply because of the fall of Adam, but that crucifixion plan was pre-designed before the creation. And also it said it's been hidden for such a long period of time. Now, the Holy Spirit is revealing to me. Okay. In Romans chapter 16, 25 through 26. Now, after that, you know, he was imprisoned. First imprisonment. From 60 to 62. For two years. During the time, he wrote four prison epistles. Four prison epistles. As you know, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Philemon. Or those four prison epistles. Now, among these, Ephesians was very uh, heavily uh, uh, taught book because Ephesus school of Tyrannus and out of Ephesus many missionaries sent out so Paul always considered city of Ephesus is, is a primary mission center so in his letter in Ephesians he began with here Chapter 1, starting verse 3 to 14. He, his letter begins with the mystery of God. You efficient Christians, let me tell you, the crucifixion plan was designed, okay, before the creation. That's a long history. He wrote that. And later, to Colossian Christians. Same, Colossians 1, 26, 27, he also addressed the same issue. Now, so you can see, all these letters, okay, after that moment, okay, he taught the first gospel, which is Genesis 3, 15, and the mystery of God. Combined together. Now here, Peter was also. Peter, he who wrote only two books, one one year prior to his physical death. Okay, upside down crucifixion. In sixty four, Peter wrote two books: first and second Peter. Peter confirmed the mystery of God in his letter. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 19 through 20. I understood, okay, Peter learned that theology out of Paul. Okay? But previously, Peter could have said the first proto evangelion like Paul. But after the Paul's letter, Peter was also revealed the mystery of God, where he put that revelation into his letter. Right here, first Peter chapter one, verses nineteen twenty. He said that 
crucifixion plan was pre-designed before the creation. That was Peter's theology. Now, Paul was writing the last letter one year prior to his death in 67, which we, are no, we know is the second Timothy. So he gave his spiritual son, Timothy, same concept here, Second Timothy 1 9. Teaching him, Timothy, crucifixion plan by the mystery of God was, was pre designed before the creation. Okay? So you teach this to your students, your disciples. Now, issue is this, then you would ask Dr. Wang, then we have learned majority Christians today around the world believing only the proto-evangelion means because of the fall of Adam, because of the fall of Adam, Jesus came to this world. We, we have taught this. We've been teaching this around the world. Now, let me tell you, you don't have to believe the mystery of God, okay? A proto-evangelion is sufficient enough for our salvation. Don't forget this, okay? Proto-evangelion belief is sufficient enough for our salvation. I would say around more than 80% of today's and throughout the uh, you know, uh, church period, 80 to say near, near 100% of Christians believed and got saved. But um, as say, Paul even taught that for 20 years, okay, many, many people during time of Paul's teaching, got saved because with that proto-evangelion. Okay. However, the mystery, the mystery, which is very difficult for all Christians to understand, okay, only designed for say saying remnant Christians. Remnant Christians means. Specially chosen God's servants, okay, those special mandate possessing, specially, special ministerial God's servants who should know that mystery of God, okay, that is not a, a Necessity for salvation, but it is a necessary necessity necessity for his ministry and developing theology for the deeper level, for the wider level, for the higher level, for the longer level. Okay, so this mystery of God takes only for those who are specially chosen by God for their, for their wider, deeper, higher, longer interpretation of the Bible and the will of God. So you don't have to know all this, but we should know, since we are servants of the Lord Jesus. For those who are studying this, you don't need to know all of all this, but uh, to those, some people should know, because I will teach you later, maybe next week, or 
at the time why we should know this. Okay? Uh, may God bless you. Yeah. Amen. Amen.